Right. Seated. What's up, guys? It's Vincent here with another video for you today. What's up, guys? It's Vincent here with another lesson for you. What's up, guys? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Vincent. I was asked to do this quick video for you guys uh, about symbols. I'm mainly here to talk to you guys about sort of using the equipment in the best way, getting the most out of what you have. Uh, so with that being said, let's jump right in. These symbols are big and they are thin. So when you have a bigger symbol, uh, you have a, a bigger surface area. So when you hit that symbol, you're going to create vibrations and those vibrations have a longer distance to travel because the symbol is so big. So that's going to be more distance, more vibrations, more volume or a louder sound. That's the first part. The second part is that these symbols are thin. So they have a little bit less, they have less meat on them, if you will. And what that means is you don't have to work so hard to get what you want out of the symbol. So because the symbols are so thin, that's gonna, that's gonna mean more stick definition, uh, a, 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 a wider dynamic range, and less of a need for you to sort of hit it super hard. You don't have to work so hard. And so that's a little bit of an intro about big and thin symbols. Why would we pick big and thin symbols, you ask? Because um, contemporary worship music, these, so, these sort of size and style symbols fit really well with this type of music. You, you, you're gonna need a wider dynamic range to be able to, for example, you know, start Cornerstone, which is quite, which is, has a quite of a big intro and then drop down to a verse and sort, and sort of be able to build up the song. So, because we're playing worship music, right? Not like a rock concert. You're, so you're never gonna get to the point where you need to max out the symbol. But because these symbols are big and thin, you still get you can, you can still get big beefy sounds without having to sort of bash away at the symbol. Okay. I want to touch on three factors today, and I want you to remember this. If you're taking notes, you know, pull out your pencil, pull out your your notes app on your phone, and I want you to write these three things: size, angle, power, sap. You feel me? The sauce, baby. So size, angle, power. Number one, size. I know you probably heard the saying: "It's not the wand, it's the wizard." That is 100% correct here. The reason I say wand is because I'm talking about the sticks here, right? Size of your stick. I understand that people have different size hands. My hands are quite huge, as you can see. You have a different hand size. You have a different stick preference. And I'm not trying to limit that. All I'm saying is certain sizes work better with these thin symbols. And because of the thickness and the, and the size of these symbols, like I said before, you shouldn't really ever need to go over 5B. So if you, that's the size of the stick when I'm saying that. If you're playing with anything heavier than a 5B or thicker than a 5B, it's gonna be a way too heavy. So you don't wanna be playing with like 2B, really thick, you know, sort of lumberjack chopping down trees type sticks or, you know, anything you would be using to play heavy metal or like heavy rock because again, we're playing, you're playing worship music, you wanna, you wanna play to the, to the style. Um, me personally, I use a uh, Vic Firth Extreme 5A and the only part that's extreme about it is that they are a tiny bit longer and they're a little bit thicker because I do, I, they're a little bit thicker than the original 5A um, and they're longer. I mainly like that they're longer because my hands are big so I want a, I want a more length on my stick. Uh, so if you're looking for any recommendations, I would highly recommend the Vic Firth uh, Extreme 5A but Pro Mark, uh, Vincent, all people, all these stick companies are making pretty good stuff now. So go with the, the brand you want. But if you're looking for thickness, try to stay under 5B or max 5B. Because the last thing we want to be doing is playing a violin with a baseball bat. That might so sound like an extreme analogy, but that that is kind of the situation we're in here. We've got really, really thin symbols. We don't want to be bashing away on them with something that's way too heavy uh, for the style of playing. Number two, angle. So you don't need to be a, a maestro or a, or a child prodigy to have good technique when you play these instruments, specifically these cymbals. And angle is a huge factor here. Number one, it does a lot for your personal sound as a drummer. Uh, number two, it increases the longevity of the instrument, which is what we want. We want these cymbals to last a long time. And number three, and most importantly, it adds to the vocabulary of things you can get out of this equipment, of different, the different amount of sounds you can get out of one cymbal just by playing it at a different angle or using, it, using you know, these minute sort of intricacies when you strike the cymbal. A couple of no-nos. You never want to strike the cymbal at a perpendicular angle, so straight on. So let's say the cymbal's sitting like this. You never want to strike the cymbal, boom, straight on. Or if you come at it like wham, you never want to hit it with the shaft of the stick going straight on like that. Number one, it's gonna eat up your sticks, and two, it can result in a broken symbol, especially on these Slim Jims right here. These things, like I said, these things are super, super tiny, super, super thin, so you don't wanna come at it and go wham, 
and crack a cymbal or worse, break your stick. No, no, number two, refrain from hitting the cymbal with the bead of the stick. And I mean the tip of the stick when I say that. Um, it's gonna give you a really nasty, like pingy, really weak sound. Um, and number two, like I said, it just doesn't give, it doesn't allow you to use the cymbal at its maximum capacity. That would be like buying an iPhone 11 Pro Max and then just using it to make phone calls. Like that's, so those are the no-nos. The yes yeses, if you will, are to strike the cymbal the right way. The best way to strike the cymbal is to use the shoulder of the stick. So that's right between the B and the shaft, this middle area here to strike the cymbal, catch the edge, but then immediately brush across the top of the cymbal. That's gonna give you the attack you want initially and, and a nice sustain without damaging your sticks or the cymbal. I actually wanna show you a couple of examples of what it would look like to crash a cymbal, but then also what it looks like to ride a cymbal, because those are two different techniques, uh, two different cymbals, all right? So check this out. So like I said before, when you go to crash a cymbal, you're gonna use the shoulder of the stick, you want to initiate contact right on the edge, boom, and then you can, as you, as you can see, my hand is sort of brushing the top of the cymbal as I as I rebound off the side of it, or as I rebound off the top of it. So again, I'm attacking, I'm hitting the edge, boom, and I'm brushing the top of it, and that creates a nice initial crash, and then a nice sustain to, to lash after it. When I'm riding a cymbal, I am going to use the bead of the stick or the top of the stick um, to give me a nice stick definition there. But if also can sort of, you can see I sort of change the angle of the stick and I use the shoulder if I want to sort of create a nice wash. But notice I'm not banging the cymbal super hard. I'm just creating a wash by using the shoulder of the stick the same way I would use it on a crash. I'm just sort of riding it, if you will. Number three, power. Respect the instrument. It is an instrument. Don't bash it. Don't bang it. Remember what you're playing, right? This is worship music, so you want to have the right sort of tones, the right sort of sounds. Remember, sort of fit the fit the band, fit the vibe of the music you're playing. Work smarter, not harder. Like I said before, these cymbals will do a lot for you, so let the cymbal work and you don't have to work so hard, all right? When I'm talking about power, my seventh grade percussion teacher, I will never forget him, his name was Mr. Dunlap. He told me that playing the drum is just like bouncing a basketball. All the motion is initiating from my wrist. Of course, when I'm gonna crash or when I'm gonna, sometimes when I go up for a ride or something, some forearm will follow because that's the natural motion of my arm, but everything I do is being initiated from the wrist, all right? So let that be your rule of thumb. If it ain't from the wrist, it ain't it, big dog. I wanna show you a couple examples of me striking the cymbals uh, with a ride pattern, but also a couple of crashes, and watch how the motion is being initiated from the wrist. All right, and that's pretty much it. Just a short, simple tutorial to show you how to use these symbols in the right way, sort of how to play them in the right way and get the most out of these beautiful instruments. And if you take care of it and if you play things the right way, they'll last you a, quite a long time. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and be sure to turn on your notifications for all the latest uploads. Also, check out my website, VincentEmergentDrums.com. Actually, it's under construction, so you don't go check it out, but you know what it's called anyway. For all the latest uh, information and any new news, Thanks for watching. I'm Vincent Mercury. Have fun. Play drums.